A couple of weeks ago, I did a vlog where I was saying how I was thinking about buying one of these uh, 2013 Mac Pros again, the trash can. Uh, not for any sensible reason, it's uh, purely nostalgia really. Well, though I have to say these computers still represent good value and they still have plenty of performance to offer. And I've got to the point where I've shortlisted four of them and I'm ready to make a purchase. Now, a couple of you commented that it would be good to film that process just to show you what to look for, how to avoid getting scammed, just get the best Mac that you can. And something that's interesting about these particular Macs is that they were made from 2013 all the way through to 2019 with basically no changes. So you could buy one of these and it could be 10 years old, or you could buy one and it's only five years old. Now, how do you know? Well, stay tuned because I'll show you a little trick that you can do with the serial number to figure out how old the machine is. So let's get started with the four Macs that I've shortlisted. None of them is an absolutely perfect choice. They're all a bit more money than I wanted to spend. And well, you'll see what I mean. Let's uh, start with the first one. Now this is advertised as a Mac Pro late 2013, 64 gigs of RAM and the Fire Pro D700s. That's what I want. I want the, the best graphics cards. So first thing I'm gonna do is just have a look at the pictures in detail. I'm just looking really to see what the overall condition of the machine is like. There's really no reason for these things to have scuffs and scratches on them. If they've been sat on a desk and looked after, they won't have those kind of marks. So I personally wouldn't buy one that's been kicked about. What I quite like about this one is that they're showing the specs on the screen in the photos, including the serial number, and that's important. We'll come to that in a moment. Now, you'll notice here that the memory is listed on this machine as being 64 gigs of 1600 megahertz RAM. Uh, and that's actually the wrong RAM. It should be 1866. So at some point someone's upgraded this Mac and they've used slightly slower RAM in it. Now it probably doesn't make a huge performance difference, but me being me, I like things to be right. So I'll probably end up changing that anyway if I bought this one. The description doesn't really give us much more information, doesn't even tell us what the CPU is. Of course, we can see that in the images. This is a six core model. It doesn't say how the machine's been used. Is it a personal machine? Has it been uh, recycled from a web studio or a graphic design studio or anything like that? Uh, none of that information is given. The seller has been on eBay since uh, 2007. They've got 100% feedback for 770 items sold. The feedback all looks good. Uh, I feel pretty confident about this listing. And they've got it up for £420. Let's move on to the next one. This is also a six core model, D700s again. We've got 64 gigs of RAM again and a two terabyte SSD. Uh, I should mention that previous one was a 256 SSD. Um, that's kind of irrelevant to me because I've got a couple of SSDs at home, so I was just gonna get an adapter and throw one of those in. Um, this model though, with its two terabyte drive, that's interesting to me. And I'm looking at the pictures and yeah, something not quite right here. These look like screenshots taken off of a phone and you look at the first image and then compare it to the next couple of images and it's a completely different setup, different background, different color temperature in the image. Uh, that sort of sends the old spidey senses tingling and we don't really have any information about the specs. The description isn't written in particularly great English, but it is a good spec and the price is 350 pounds with the ability to make an offer. So I think it's worth messaging the seller. And when you look at the seller's other products and their feedback, again, it's very positive. So I did message the seller. I've had a good conversation with them. I've been sent uh, additional images, including the serial number. So I'm content that this is a genuine sale. It is important, of course, to do a bit of research into the seller. So check the feedback, check their other items for sale. Um, are they selling other high value items or are they only selling really low cost items and suddenly then a Mac Pro? Uh, that's worth checking out. One of the scams that does happen on eBay is where accounts get hijacked and people will put higher value items on uh, and basically steal your money. But you are pretty well protected these days. I have to say eBay has up their game when it comes to buyer protection. Make sure you pay with your credit card so you get that extra level of protection, but you've also got the eBay buyer protection. So if anything goes wrong, generally speaking, it's fairly straightforward to get your money back on this. But do your research first. And if you're in doubt, talk to the seller. And if you're not getting the straight answers that you want, walk away. There'll always be another deal at another time. And of course, if it sounds too good to be true, it almost certainly is. 
and we'll come back to that serial number in a moment. Let's have a look at the third contender. Uh, this one's also at £350. This has got an 8 core in it. So that'll be the 1680 V2 chip. That's the one that was originally shipped by Apple in the 8 core models. I've bought the 2667 version 2, uh, which is a very similar 8 core chip, but it is clocked ever so slightly higher. So it might have just a little bit of a performance edge. So whatever happens, I'm going to replace the CPU with the one I've bought. When we look at the image here of the ports, and you can see there's a sort of little bit of white edges around the edge of the ports. You can see it's been fairly well used, this particular machine. So it's come from a studio by the look of it. If we take a look at the description, it tells us what's inside. We've got the 32 gigs of RAM, we've got a 500 gig SSD. Uh, looks pretty good. And I have emailed the seller again, and the seller did provide me with the serial number and told me also that it's come from a studio environment. So that's okay. And let's have a look at the fourth option. This one's a bit more money. This is £449. It's a six core model, again with the D700 graphics. We've got 32 gigs of RAM and a 256 SSD. And we look at the images and again, it looks pretty tidy reasonably well used, but uh, we've got the serial number and that's important. Now let me tell you why that's important. I found this particular chart, let me put this up on the screen so that you can see it larger. And I can't actually remember which website I found this from, so I'm not able to give credit, but uh, if anybody knows, please pop that in the comments below and I'll give you a shout out. Um, but this is quite an interesting thing that apparently Apple's serial numbers, if we're to believe this, contain the manufacturing date of the machine in characters four and five. So that machine that we're just looking at there, if you have a look at the serial number, you can see that the fourth character is X. So that places us in the second half of 2018. And uh, the other character there, the fifth character is K. So that means the 16th week in the second half of 2018. So that's a pretty new machine. Interesting. Now the price is a little bit on the high side, I think, for what they're offering. So let's have a look at the others. When we go to this eight core model that was used in a studio, I messaged the seller, I got the serial number back on that and that's actually a 2014 model. So that's much older, that's a 10 year old Mac there. In our next one, the, the one with the slightly odd pictures, so the seller got that serial number for me and uh, that one is a P. So that places it in the first half of 2015. And the other letter was J, so that's week 15 of 2015. Now just have a look at this screenshot from Mac Rumors. And this comes from uh, 2016 when Apple started a recall of Macs with the D500 and the D700 graphics cards because there was an issue with those GPUs on Macs that were built at the start of 2015. Now depending on where you count your weeks from, uh, J, this particular Mac, either falls on the last week of that manufacturing period that was affected by the recall, or it's the week after. So either way, we would need to find out whether this particular Mac has had the recall done on the graphics cards before making a purchase. It would be just silly to buy it otherwise because that recall obviously is no longer valid. But if it does have the recall done, then that's a really good price, 350 to get that kind of spec. You're getting the 64 gigs of RAM, which incidentally is pretty much what you wanna go for. If you run 64 gigs of RAM with four matched 16 gigabyte DIMMs, then you're going to get the memory running at 1,866 mega transfers per second. If you put in 128 gigs, which you can do on these models, then it will downclock the memory. I can't remember off the top of my head to what, but it is quite a drop and you will notice that in performance. So if you don't need more than 64 gigs, don't put more than 64 gigs in the machine. This is a great spec, a six core with 64 gigs, the D700s and two terabytes of storage for 350 pounds, or it seems they'll take an offer. So it would be a great option, but we'd need to find out whether it's had the recall done. And based on the communication I've had with the seller, I'm not confident that she'll know the answer to that. So moving on then to the final choice. So this is the six core model with 64 gigs of RAM that is the wrong type of RAM, uh, 420 pounds. And if we look at the serial number there, we can see characters four and five are Z and two. So that puts us into the second half of 2019 and the second week of that second half of 2019. So that's uh, week 29 in the year. That must have been one of the last Mac Pros ever manufactured of this type. So that for me seals the deal, that's the one I want because it's got a little bit of a story to it. 
And um, I'm going to change the RAM anyway. I'm going to change the CPU. So I'm going to change the storage. So I'm kind of happy with that. So I figured let's put a cheeky offer in. Let's just say £380. Uh, I didn't want to go too low because there was only a couple of hours left on the auction. The seller did come back to me and we agreed on £400 plus shipping, uh, which I think was £12.50. So the next thing I need to do is choose the RAM. And I found a couple of different options and they're both the same price for a 64 gig kit at £42. Uh, so the first option, it says it's HP memory. I think they're just saying it's suitable for those particular HP Z workstations. Uh, it actually looks like it's been pulled from Cisco hardware. And that's a really good sign because Anything that's been pulled from a server is generally a good bet when it comes to buying hardware. The reason for that is that switching a machine on applies the most stress to the components in the machine. So if you start up your computer, then shut it down all the time, then uh, arguably that puts more stress on the components. Whereas a server or network gear will have typically been used in a 24 seven environment and often in a dust-free air-conditioned data center. So these components are often a really good choice. Uh, you can see from here that this is actually Samsung branded RAM. So I'd be quite happy with that in my Mac Pro and it is the right type. It's uh, 1866 megahertz DDR3 and it's ECC registered. That's important. Uh, the Mac Pro is a workstation so it has ECC RAM. The other option I found was a brand I'm not particularly familiar with, uh, Data RAM. But uh, if you look at the chips in the background, you can see they're SK Hynix chips. And I'm fairly certain that Apple used SK Hynix RAM in their own branded RAM on many occasions. So I'm quite happy that that's good quality RAM. And again, it's just 42 pounds. It is the right stuff. So it really comes down to a choice of green or blue. And I've seen a lot of green RAM dims in my life, so I'm gonna go with blue. I think that'll look quite cool in the Mac Pro, so I'll buy those as well. So that's another 42 pounds. So the machine was 400, delivery was 1250. Uh, I'm now adding 42 pounds for the RAM. I can't remember the exact price of the CPU, but I'll put that up on screen. I think it was about 25, somewhere in that region. And I'm going to need to buy an adapter for an NVMe SSD. So by the time all is said and done, Put the total price up on the screen but it's around about the 500 pounds mark and that's definitely more than i wanted to spend on an old machine that really i'm only buying for a bit of fun um, if you were looking to buy one of these as your main computer does that still represent value at 500 pounds well i think stay tuned on that because i'm going to bring a few more videos to the channel where i test this thing out so the things i want to do with it first of all i'll try just running it with monterey and we'll do the, um, the upgrades after I've checked it all works fine. We'll do a complete tear down and we'll film that. So we'll put new thermal paste on the GPUs. I think that's really important. Uh, we'll change out the CPU and again, thermal paste. Uh, we'll pop in that new SSD. We'll change over the RAM. I'll show you how to set up a fan curve in TG Pro. I'm gonna try it with the eGPU again. I'll also try it with uh, a Thunderbolt 4 dock using the adapter. And then I'm going to play with it for music production with Logic. And obviously we'll do some benchmarks and other things with it as well. I think a lot of people could actually use one of these Mac Pros as their main computer. There's still more than enough power there. And looking at the comments that I got on the last video I did, a lot of you guys are still using these machines. And there are certain applications where in actual fact, these Mac Pros are a better choice than Apple Silicon. I know you might find that hard to believe, but there are some sort of niche applications for that. Uh, for most people though, it's an iconic machine that still has something to offer even in 2024. And that's why I wanna have a play with it. You can get them cheaper. I think that's fair to say. I think in the US and in Canada, you can certainly find them cheaper. And that's because there's more choice available. Uh, here in the UK, not so much choice, particularly of the high-end models with the D700 cards. If you don't wanna go for a D700 model, you'll find there's actually not that much difference in performance between the D300 and the D500. So uh, you can pick those up pretty cheaply. And all of these Mac Pros can take the same range of CPUs and of course the same RAM. So I'm really looking forward to playing with this thing. And uh, please let me know in the comments section what you wanna see. Obviously when it arrives, we'll do the full unboxing experience and we'll, we'll keep the story going so that you can see how I get on with this thing. So hopefully you found this content enjoyable or useful in some way. And if so, please give us a thumbs up or thumbs down if you didn't enjoy it. Uh, either way, hope to see you again soon for some more geekery.